The other day, Isabel Oakshot, that's Richard Tice's friend, uh, wrote a piece for the Daily Telegraph advocating the mass deportation of illegal migrants. Well, first of all, her definition of illegal migrants follows the Suella Braverman laws, which I think should be repealed because they are clearly not going to be enacted by the present government and therefore are redundant and inappropriate. Uh, but um, uh, real illegal migrants, that is those who have outstayed their visa or who have come here without a visa, yes, of course they should be deported, but people who have come to Britain by an illegal route, who expected to be able to claim asylum and were forbidden to do so by the Illegal Migration and Nationality and Borders Acts put out by Suella Bravman in 2022 and 2023, uh, no, the Home Office should get its finger out and start processing their applications and see whether or not they merit an asylum application and, uh, or, or indeed a refugee status. If they do, then they should be uh, kept in the UK and uh, being uh, be given proper status so they can contribute to our society, pay tax and move forward. Uh, Oakshot argues for a stunningly ambitious returns program to address what she perceives as an overwhelming immigration crisis and her perspective is fundamentally flawed in several respects. First of all, the crisis is not about, quote, illegal migrants. We've already got an, uh, a responsibility to take in th this quite small number of migrants who make it to our shores if they appeal for asylum. And we really should be offering safe and legal routes so they're not forced into the hands of traffickers and smugglers and uh, compelled to cross the English Channel. And why do I say that? Because on the 22nd of November 2022, when in a Commons Committee room, she was, uh, Suella Bravman was asked by uh, Tim Lawton how an unnamed hypothetical African refugee, who uh, African migrant who had every uh, expectation of being granted asylum in the United Kingdom should he make it to the United Kingdom because he had relatives there because his case was sound how could he make it to the UK without safe and legal routes from an undisclosed African country and Suella Bravman admitted that the only thing he could do was to make it to the coast of France and then uh, use the smugglers small boats and risk his life going across the English Channel. That was what she um, accepted, was the reality for the majority of people who had sound reasons for wanting to claim asylum in the UK. And there are many reasons why somebody might be claiming asylum in the UK rather than elsewhere. And indeed, we should be sharing the um, burden of the, um, the, the asylum applications with other civilized countries across Europe. Uh, Oakshot's argument lacks the nuanced understanding of the human rights implications involved in mass deportation. The suggestion that migrants from countries like Vietnam should be the first to be deported because they are economic opportunists overlooks the complexities of migration. And migration is often driven by a combination of factors um, including poverty, lack of opportunity, and in some cases subtle forms of persecution or state repression. And labelling these individuals as mere takers, as she does, dehumanises them and fails to acknowledge the potential contributions that they could make to society. The UK, with its long-standing commitment to human rights, cannot morally justify a policy that might lead to the indiscriminate and forced removal of individuals without due consideration of their circumstances. It's an outrageous suggestion. The legal process for deportation in the UK is governed by strict rules and regulations that are designed to ensure that each case is treated fairly and that the rights of individuals are respected. And yes, indeed, Suella Bravman may have tried to overlook some of that, but Oakshot's call for mass deportations appears to go even beyond that and to bypass these legal safeguards, suggesting a system more akin to authoritarian, totalitarian dictatorship, regimes uh, of filth rather than a democratic state bound by the rule of law and 
a constitution written or otherwise. This, uh, the comparison to Pakistan's deportation of Afghan refugees is particularly troubling as it fails to recognize the distinct legal and ethical standards that should govern actions in a liberal democracy. And the UK's legal obligations under international law, including the European Convention on Human Rights, would likely be breached by such a policy. The practicality of Oakshot's proposal is also highly questionable, implementing a mass deportation programme on a scale she suggests would be logically challenging, extremely costly, highly and likely uh, to be ineffective and fraught with practical complexity. She's, she's simply writing writing a piece presumably to get paid she's just writing for the sake of writing i think or she's or or, or she's trying to drum up uh, odium the current target of deporting 1, uh, 14,500 illegal migrants in 6 months is already ambitious and we shouldn't have targets it's not possible to have a target when it comes to uh, migrants who are seeking asylum we accept or we reject whoever is whoever doesn't meet the criterion. We can't say, oh, we're only going to accept 20 um, refugees this year. You're a refugee 21, you've got a very good case, but we're, we, we've run out of places. Go back home. It's outrageous. That is not um, in line with the 1951 Refugee Convention that we are still signatories to. If we don't like that, Convention, we have two choices. We can leave it or we can get it revised. But we can't ignore it simply because some unelected um, individual who happens to be the girlfriend of, uh, of, of, of a person who's recently been elected to Parliament thinks that it's appropriate to do so and, and has got some sort, of, um, some sort of opportunity to write for a major newspaper. This is outrageous, and it's outrageous that she's being given, being given a voice. Um, she should go back to rewriting people's diaries, and you know, and 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 then publishing all the filth she collects on the way. I think she'd be in a much stronger ethical position than this sort of rubbish that she's put into the Daily Telegraph. Um, the suggestion that such a policy, that the policy that she's putting forward could lead to voluntary departures is speculative at best. But I, I think that's probably the one bit of her article that makes sense. Yes, I think people would run, run a mile. They would realise this was not a civilised country at all. Why would, why would anybody want to stay here? I think people are already wondering if we, if, if we can put um, oak shots uh, filth in the middle of, an, uh, of, of a national newspaper <laughs> and expect people to take it seriously. Why would anyone think that, that Britain is committed to uh, civilization? People might be, might be duped into thinking that Britain is on the verge of a takeover by some sort of fascistic regime. Maybe that's what will happen if Reform UK have their way. Um, but, you know, many migrants, regardless of their legal status, have established lives in the UK, contributing to the economy and to society. And disrupting these lives on a massive scale would likely have serious social and economic consequences. Oakshot's argument, I, and actually one good example of that is is the Windrush generation, where suddenly people were were um, were stripped of their history simply because Theresa May was too stupid to keep proper records. Oakshot's argument about the failure of migrants to integrate, um, exemplified by the claim that 161,000 people in England and Wales do not speak English, is misleading. Language barriers are indeed a challenge, but they're not insurmountable, and we should be taking steps to teach English. The emphasis should be on improving integration processes. Language education, supporting migrants rather than using lack of language skills as a justification for deportation. Moreover, the narrative that links immigration to 
the breakdown in society is a dangerous oversimplification that risks inflaming tensions and promoting xenophobia across the country. The UK's history of benefiting from immigration is well documented and the focus should be on fostering inclusion rather than exclusion. And the decision uh, that, that, that Oakeshott draws, uh, the, the distinction that she draws between brilliant legal migrants such as healthcare workers and so-called low and unskilled illegal migrants is both arbitrary and unfair. Many migrants, regardless of their legal status, contribute to the UK in various ways, including through labour that's essential but often undervalued. We need more unskilled labours, labourers. If, if, for example, we're going to rescue the berry industry, which is on the brink of collapse, particularly in, 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 in um, Cambridgeshire and Norfolk and Lincolnshire and Kent. And the notion that illegal migrants are predominantly takers fails to recognise the economic contributions, such as working in sectors where there are labour shortages. Moreover, the social contribution of migrants, including cultural enrichment and diversity, shouldn't be dismissed out of hand by, by, by somebody who's made their, their living ghosting other people's memoirs. Isabel Oakeshott's advice for mass deportation of illegal migrants is not only ethically and legally problematic, but also impractical and potentially harmful to the fabric of our society. A more balanced and humane approach is required, one that recognises the complexities of migration, respects human rights and focuses on integration and support rather than exclusion and deportation. And the UK's response to immigration should be informed by its values of fairness, justice, compassion, hard work, not by the reactionary and punitive measures that would do more harm than good, not by the go slow in the Home Office, but by a commitment to ensuring that we are there to help people who are desperate, because they're but for the grace of God.